Come on, Rad Man, let us know. Come We've been on, waiting. Man. You know? Come on, we've been here for hours. You, let us you, know you said you're gonna kick down the info. Now kick down, man. Give it to us. Yeah, you had a good time. Come on. Tired. Come on. Dude, let's just go. All right, all right, all right. Bone Brigade. Come down a little bit. Let me tell you guys something. First of all, no one's more into finding animal chin than the Rad Man. Now, that's the bottom line. There's something you guys gotta know. If you look too hard for animal chin, you're never gonna find them. Last call for eight, And you gotta relax and enjoy your skating. Isn't that how it all started out? Huh? All right, think about that. And when you're thinking about that, Listen to me right now. There's a secret here I got for just the six of us. It's not gonna go any farther than this. Heard about this ramp. It's in this field between two junkyards, just south of a town called Guadalupe. Man, this ramp, I've seen pictures of this ramp. <laughs> I mean, my wheels are itching just thinking about it. I mean, really, yeah, I'm telling you. I don't even think it's man-made, dudes. I'm talking uh, skate Martians or something came down and made this like thing. I'm pyramids telling you. or something? It's insane, Tom. It's insane. It's, and you'll rip insanely on this thing. I'm telling you. Everything will come together if you find the ramp. Hey, everybody. I'm back at the Dow Punks Cohort 4 Week 3 update. And uh, yeah, three weeks into this uh, grant program, and it's, it's been pretty cool. It's given me a lot of time to be able to reflect a lot about why I'm doing what I'm doing. I record this on video because, yes, it's cool to have like an alternative for somebody to be able to watch or listen to it, but also because um, I want to hear myself say this out this out loud. Like, do I stand by what I'm writing down? Like this, this stuff in my head and does it sound okay to me as I say it out loud? And sometimes when I say things out loud, it just, <laughs> it just sounds really ridiculous. So yeah, this is a, I'm going to be reading, you know, what I wrote down. So yeah, here, here goes nothing. Innovation's never static. It always moves. And it's like the movie, The Search for Animal Chin, the Bones Brigade video. I don't know if you've ever seen that or not. It's a skateboarding video in the 80s. And Johnny Rad, he says in the movie, if you look too hard for Animal Chin, you're never going to find him. You just got to relax and have fun. The ramp where Animal Chin was supposed to reside was located in between two junkyards just south of a town called Guadalupe. Everything will come together if you find your ramp. When I was growing up, being punk meant taking a huge risk and standing up against the conservative mainstream establishment, right? It meant ripping your khaki pants, putting safety pins in your ears, coloring your hair crazy colors, spray painting anarchy symbols everywhere, and giving the middle finger to corporations and the conservative church at the time. It meant making yourself ugly to the establishment. But in an ironic twist of fate, all those things that made someone punk in the 80s is exactly what that mainstream media and culture nowadays tells you is cool and the right thing to be and do. So many Gen Xers are, have not been able to accept that, and they're still continuing to push their 80s punk ideals on a society that's no longer rejecting them. And, it has, and, and that society, in a sense, has co-opted their culture for the purpose of profit and power. So our language changes. What was once used to describe innovation and change becomes the establishment. What's not changed, however, is a yearning for those who do not have the power or feel at home in the current power structure to create a force that goes against the hierarchical power structure. I described in the previous two weeks the term anarchy, the DIY skate community, the idea of there being no financial guarantees in the punk lifestyle, and how we bring skeuomorphic language, using the old language to describe the new, into innovation to describe the next phase of change as we move from one par power paradigm to the next. So one of the new words we like to toss around as a way to express our disdain for current hierarchy is DAO. However, DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization, is an infrastructure. That's it. To be in a DAO is to be attached, associated, or to have an identity to that infrastructure. To be a DAO is to use that infra infrastructure. Many people are trying to find ways to make a DAO recognized as an LLC. A DAO is recognized in Wyoming and a few other states, and people are setting up DAOs in the Marshall Islands as legal entities. 
I questioned last week if a DAO can even operate in the same language models as traditional organizations. Are people trying to use old 80s punk language on a new model for a new era? On another note, is VitaDAO, nothing against VitaDAO, but they're heavily funded by large corporation Pfizer. Is, is that the same as DAO punks liberating us from the corporate lifestyle? Just because they both use the word DAO to describe themselves, does that make them the same? In a podcast called Many Such Things, I did video production work, work for on this week. One of the hosts, Ted, not Lasso, uh, she described the idea that in this next wave of crypto, we need to be, get more specific about the language that we're using, and we need to move beyond describing everything that uses a certain infrastructure as that, the word DAO, for example. She also illustrated that the same idea can apply to NFTs. Using an NFT for a subscription is not the same as owning a one-of-one -one art piece NFT. They're very different from each other, yet they're both called NFTs because they use the same infrastructure. She goes on to talk about referring to all clothes as cloth. Are we talking about shirts, pants, socks, etc.? All very different, but using the same base fabric. But back to DAOs. You can slap a multi-sig on anything and call it a DAO. But you can also use tools such as Party App and Joker Ace to handle decisions, build out activities and events with chats, create memberships, set up funding, make polls, etc. In the same podcast episode, Ted Not Lasso and Johnny Mac, the hosts, they talked about Farcaster channels such as Crypto Art Channel having wallets and becoming their own mini DAOs and using the tools I listed, among many others. There's so many ways you can use the word DAO. With regulators breathing down everyone's necks and the uncertainty harshing everyone's mellow, I agree 100% with Ted, not Lasso, that we need to get more specific about the language we're using. It seems to me that the DAOs that the regulators are getting all squawky about are not the same DAOs that artists and innovators are calling their home communities. DAO's just a word, an acronym describing a concept, Decentralized Autonomous Organization. There's no company or corporation or mission to maximize profit in many of these new DAOs. These DAOs just are. They're the they are the community. They, they are community. They're dandelion flowers that have grown up in the cracks of the concrete in the form of our isolation of home lockdowns. They're humanity persevering and doing what we do when the power structure chokes too tight. They're fun. They're punk. You can't regulate a DAO because regulation is supposed to be about preventing an entity from becoming too powerful and taking advantage of others, right? Well, if DAOs are punk, and punk is that sweet spot of innovation constantly moving in the trough of the sine wave between two power peaks, and there is no regulation. And if you are constantly on the top of the sine wave, you'll always miss the trough. And if you reside in the trough, you can't take advantage of anyone, and therefore, you should not be regulated. So back to Johnny Rad speaking about how to find Animal Chin. If you look too hard for Animal Chin, you're never going to find him. You just got to relax and have fun. The ramp where Animal Chin was supposed to reside was located in between two junkyards just south of a town called Guadalupe. Everything will come together if you find your ramp. If you're actively searching, You've already found him. Now, for my weekly update, I suppose. Am I becoming full-time Web3? Am I becoming a DAO punk? I think I'm already there. I'm actively searching, and almost all of my income paying for my March bills were Web3 and DAO work-based. There was still some income that came in that was based on meat space gigs, but none of it was corporate. I've been working hard to get all my ETH Denver footage published with Crypto Sapiens, and I'm in the middle of editing and publishing the AI Web3 series from the Unrestricted Intelligence Summit. And I've also started producing new, uh, two new podcasts in the Web3 space, one called Open Society, dealing with the intersection of biotechnology and Web3, and the other called Many Such Things that I quoted above here in this blog post, focusing on current Web3 trends, trends and in particular, the, the Farcaster ecosystem. So yes, things are making great progress. None of my work entails any corporate entities, and I'm so stoked and grateful for this new reality that I'm choosing and that I've allowed myself to receive from you, the community.
You can even do the back twist. Front side grind, anytime. Lean air, I don't have it. Ho, ho, sex change right now, now. <laughs> <laughs>